Hi everyone. Okay, so here is the week four Dust Bowl and Great Depression lesson. Okay, so you need to watch the video. It's going to be the brain pop over the Great Depression. All right, so the Dust Bowl. During World War I, demand for wheat was high. High wheat prices led Texas farmers to plant more. But when the war ended, prices dropped quickly. Farmers planted more wheat to make up for the low prices, which only caused the price to drop even more. Farmers' overplanting of wheat held lead to the natural disaster. In the 1930s, the Great Plains had record high temperatures and a lack of rain. When the wheat plants died, there was nothing to keep the dry soil in place. Then the region was struck by strong windstorms. So think about it, you have all this dirt on the ground, nothing holding it there, and then all this wind comes in. What do you think is gonna happen to the dirt? This wind picked up the soil and formed huge dust clouds. The blowing dust got into homes, suffocated some livestock, caught and caused many people to develop lung problems. They were breathing in all of this dirt and it was getting stuck in their lungs. As a result, the Southern Great Plains, including Western Texas, so up in our panhandle, was nicknamed the Dust Bowl. So many farmers gave up abandoning their land. Others lost their land when, to the banks when they could not afford to make loan payments. About one third of the farmers in the Panhandle region of Texas left the area. So a lot of people are gonna start moving west, okay? They're gonna start migrating towards California, hoping that there's better stuff over there. They weren't having this horrible dust storms there. So your first thing you need to do is highlight or underline two effects of the Dust Bowl. So look up in these first three paragraphs and I want you to highlight two things, two effects of the Dust Bowl. All right, the Great Depression ends, begins, excuse me. So after World War I, the oil business was booming, but the stock market, that's a place where you can buy pieces of a company, had problems. Investors kept borrowing money from banks to buy stocks, but after six years, prices started to drop. So they're borrowing this money to buy like an investment in a company. So once the company starts losing money, you start losing money because your piece of the company is worth, worth less than when you bought it. On October 29th, 1929, known as Black Tuesday, stock markets lost most of their value. This caused the stock market to crash, okay? Because these companies are losing money and so people start losing money. And so they start selling them. They're like, you know, I'm just gonna sell, sell my little pieces now and hope make some money back, okay? But when everybody does that, then there's no one buying them. And so the companies are losing all this money and it caused it to crash. So this crash led to the Great Depression, which lasted from 1929 to 1945. That lasted 16 years. Most of y'all aren't 16 years old, so that's a really long time. So the way it works is the stock market crashes, okay? Investors can't repay their loans. So remember, they borrowed money, but now they're, what they bought is worthless. So they didn't make any money at all, but they owe the banks a lot of money. So when people can't pay the banks back, the banks fail. And when the banks fail, they have to close, meaning they can't give you money. Well, if you had money in there, you don't have any money anymore. The bank lost it. So then that means factories and businesses started to close because people can't buy their stuff. All right. So people are losing jobs because their factories are closing. So that means they can't buy stuff because they don't have money. And so more factories close. And it's just like this big cycle of people losing their jobs, not having enough money. So that means more jobs have to close because people aren't buying stuff. So number two, what did they name the day the stock market crashed? Okay, so I want you to tell me, what did they name that day? Okay, so I gave you the sentence, Tim. The day the stock market crashed is called, and write your answer there. Okay, life in Texas during the early 1930s. Okay, in the early years of the Depression, Texans and their communities tried to provide relief for those who were hit hardest. So some people that still had their jobs or cities that were still had money were trying to provide for the people that had lost their jobs or didn't have money. Businesses offered credit so people could buy things they needed. So they would say, okay, here you can just buy it on credit and you can pay us back whenever you get money. And supported gardens to grow needed food. 
Many communities raised money to help feed the hungry. However, soon people began to look to the government for help. That only lasts so long, and if more people are losing their jobs, that means less money people can give to others. So more than 200,000 Mexican Americans left Texas for Mexico. So if people had moved from Mexico to Texas hoping to find better work during the war because they were making a lot more money, now they realize, okay, I don't have a job here anymore. I'm going to go back to Mexico because Mexico wasn't having as much trouble as we were. Government officials hoped this move of workers would open jobs for others. And they say, okay, well, if we have all these people leaving, then all their jobs would be open. So number three says, what are two ways Texans helped each other in the Great Depression? So I want you to find two ways that they were helping each other in these two paragraphs. So the two ways Texans helped each other were, and I want you to write your two um, ways there. Okay. During the Depression, unemployment rates for African Americans were two to three times higher than those for whites. Meaning if you had one white person unemployed, you probably had three African Americans unemployed. Okay. Government agencies often did not give aid to African Americans or gave them less money than they gave to white citizens. Okay, it's just racism. That's all you can explain it for. There was no other reason. Many African Americans left Texas farms to look for work in cities. So remember, we talked about after the Civil War, a lot of former slaves that had been freed didn't have an education. So all they could do was farm. And their children, there was a lot of racism in the South, including Texas. And so then their children pretty much just did the same thing. So all, most of them worked on farms. But now, because of the Dust Bowl and because of the Great Depression, they're going to leave the farms and try to find work in factories in the cities. So number four says, highlight why many African Americans left Texas. Okay, so you're going to take your highlighter or you can take your pencil and underline why they were leaving Texas. Okay, so last thing, the visual analysis. So this is a picture um, of a farm during the Dust Bowl. So number five says, list five things you see in this picture. So I want you to just write down, you don't have to make them a sentence, just make bullet points of five things that you see in the picture. Now number six says, how might these things make it hard for farmers? Okay, so those five things you listed, why might they make it hard for farmers? These things make it hard for farmers because, so this is your opinion, so there's no wrong answer. So I want you to tell me why might those things you listed make it hard for farmers to work? All right, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.